68 motivate motor nation let's go we're going to increase motivation which means increasing the motor that runs your mind and increasing the motor that runs your life which is your which is your pocketbook your assets so we're going to 68 in the hate while motivate becomes the new way of increasing potential this isn't just some vague idea this is a scientifically proven 251 times in a row and that's just in my office alone but america there's something you need to know is that the hate that we have amongst each other is more going on inside of our brains than it is out here and the beauty and the things that god has given us so let's go ahead this is your next vice president president reverend dr champ finchy nicholas lee sutton and there's a formula i want to teach you today it's increase motivate, so positive motivate, minus hate, minus hate, the hateful words, hateful thoughts, hateful systems, slave systems, things that hold the American money and hold people in poverty and hold us down. All right, so increase motivate, so increase the money going into our pockets and increase the ability of your brain to work. Decrease, boo, hate. And that equals, find out soon, right during this song. Do you like fortunes? How about a fortunate? Would you like to be the fortunate son? I would. But let me tell you, in the 1960s, there was a lot of stuff about stopping hate. As the blacks were getting more freedom, black Americans, and as the females were uh, getting the rights and the ones that both col people of all colors, people of all genders deserve here in America, and this is a song that I've fallen in love with that really talks about the old school system, but it's a fun song. So increase motivate, decrease hate, and that equals a lot more fortunate. On your feet, let's dance. If you know it, sing along. Let's go, America. Fly like eagles, MAGA motherfucker, USA. Some folks born made to wear the flag. Oh, that red, white, and blue. And when the band plays, hail to the chief. Oh, they point the cannon at you, Lord, yeah. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no senator, son, yeah, nah. It ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no fortunate one, no. Some folks born silver spoon in hand. Lord, don't they help themselves, y'all. When the band miss, when the taxman comes to your door, Lord, it looks like a Roman sailman. It ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no millionaire son, nah, nah. It ain't me, it ain't me here. Ain't no fortunate one, no. That's right, America, that's right. We're number one, but when we go to our houses, it looks like a Roman sale. What's going on? Why are our country so rich, but we're not? That's about to change. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah! Folks of Herod, stars spangled eyes. Ooh, they'll send you down to war, Lord, yeah. And when they ask you, how much you will give, what you tell? Oh, only answer is more, more, more. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no military son. Nah, nah. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no fortunate one. Now, for me, it ain't me. I ain't no fortunate one. Nah, nah, nah. It ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no fortunate son. I hope you enjoyed that. And I think there's so many good points in, in that Cretus Clearwater song from the 1960s. And what it is, is there's a lot of people with a silver spoon in their mouth. So America is doing good, but only a few people got that silver spoon right now. 
And I tell you what, it ain't me. And I know it's not you either. 70 to 80% of us are one to two paychecks away or one recession away. You can't see my face, let me take this out. One recession away, just like we had in the early 2000s from losing your million dollar homes, from, from all the contracts that you have right now. And, and so right now we, we're in a prime place with America priming, but right now our country, as I've been warning, is under attack. Donald, President Donald Trump, salute you sir, can't wait to be your VP. But he, he said something the other day and I couldn't agree with him more. It's almost like he's following my videos. But he talked about if he had listened to John Bolton, he'd have been in the Sixth World War. Well, the Third World War is the one right now, the invisible one, on our technologies, on the hacking and on the leaking and on this whistleblower thing. Can you believe that we as Americans, with 330 million plus people in this country, that there's one whistleblower and it's not even the guy from the Andy Griffith show. So what is a whistleblower? I'm trying to figure this out. Our president's on trial for making a phone call about a, a potentially the next president for doing illegal things with the money that our presidents approved that that person's son may have just given a handout of 150 plus million dollars. That could have made three people in every state a millionaire. That would have been more fun than this. Uh, than this. What about the 50 plus million dollar Russia investigation? That could have made 50 more Americans a million dollars. What are they arguing over? They're arguing over your money and my money. We ain't no fortunate sons. Nah, nah, nah. What are they gonna do? They're gonna send us off to war, Lord. That's, all, that's what's going on. Ooh, another trouble in the Middle East. Everybody, everybody get nervous. Everybody get nervous. It's time to get nervous. We're gonna send us off to war again. Time to use more tax dollars. Time to make sure your bank accounts are empty using fear tactics. Time to make sure that they try to kick a president out that was rightfully elected and that's been proven through the Russia investigation. And now they're trying to impeach a man using something called a whistleblower, which to me sure sounds like a tattletale or a snitch, but much more imaginary. Like some body, some where that we ain't gonna tell nobody shh it's the Alma Fudd secret Fudd brain we ain't gonna tell you Tony sis it's a whistleblower <laughs> <coughs> we're gonna kick you out of the presidency of the United States who cares what half the country wants or more Woo! that's what it's come down to but why because foreign entities are putting pressure on our Elmer Fudd Congress and Senate but there's some good people in there right now that's standing up for right and wrong but I have to give it to both sides they are making some good points about when is enough presidential power enough to where it's not abuse well i can tell you this well if a president can't have a conversation or a phone call without all of us knowing knowing it then he doesn't have enough power you can't abuse power when people are whistleblowing and talking, you can't even have an open mind. One thing America needs to keep is an open-minded president. Otherwise, you're a slave. So right now, our technology is too easily hacked. We have too many leakers. Our country is so bipartisan, and it's the and, and we've been made into thinking it's about uh, made into thinking it's about the rich or the poor, or the blacks or the whites, or the men and the women. When the truth of the matter is, that's just the that's just the common political jargon that they've been feeding us to get us separated, to keep us arguing between who gets more money, Russia or Ukraine? Who gets more money, Iran or Iraq? Who gets more money, Afghanistan or Pakistan? And that's how it goes. That's how our Senate and Congress is set up in the upper echelons of it. And so right now we're under a uh, under a, a World War III of invisible leaking or stolen information. Somehow everything that the president says gets leaked. So I do have a theory that that could be on purpose, uh, but at the same time I don't think it is. So what, what what's going on? Who, who are the leakers? Why is there no treason against the people leaking what the president says in private or on a private phone call? So if he was asking. Just to give you this some more, he made a phone call about multiple things, and they're saying that he used this phone call 
to persuade an election coming up while you have Democrats running for president against him that are using an impeachment about that phone call and they're calling him corrupt about something that they did that was corrupt over here with the money that both parties has of yours and mine. That's where your tax money's going. Is this argument over? How do we help the American people? No, this is argument is over, over the rich and foreigners. That's really all it's about. So we're gonna stop that World War III. World War IV is the one on our minds. The, the, we have 50 to 70% of all Americans in a mental health condition of dysregulation. So in other words, your filtering is either, it either has extra fog on it or extra stress and anxiety on it, or likely both. And we can prove this through all the brain maps that we're, we, we've been able to do. So the fourth world war is how do we stop the brain destruction and shortening of the American lifespan? How does that happen in today's time? Well, I have solutions for that. The fifth thing is right now the world is taking on our president using our Congress and our Senate to do it. So in other words, our money is tied up in all these foreign entities which created world peace. But America, through doing that, making peace with everybody out there and making all these deals with all the people around the world, we've, we have the strongest country in the world by doing this. So way to go, congratulations. But we have 50 to 70% of our population in both mental health and how about that? It also equals the one to two paychecks away or a recession away from poverty level. They kind of equal each other. So how do we improve on these, these things using the motivate mentality. Well, we're going to get life improving technologies in, in, into our school systems, into our jails, and into your homes. So in other words, when you're worried about what's going on with little Timmy, instead of walking around and calling 12 people in your neighborhood, you can walk up, put a little cap on his head, and say, have a seat, Timmy, sit still for three minutes. All right, cool. We see you got some anxiety. So before I send you off to school today and you get kicked out of class because eh, your mind just hasn't been taught the ways to calm down and to focus and to think better, then We'll just put this cap on you. Now off school, Timmy goes with a good brain and a good mind. Timmy comes home with better grades. It's really simple. That's the motivate because this is how you break the Tony Robbins glass ceiling. And again, Tony Robbins, he is the most motivated man ever. And I, I love Tony Robbins. I, I've, I've gained some from, from the things he talks about. But at the same time, can you tell me, Nate, can you tell me someone or a way how, if someone wants to know how to get motivated, is that hard to find? All you gotta do is wait for the next YouTube commercial and somebody's gonna sell you a funnel saying that they know how to motivate you to make 10,000, 100,000, 1 million dollars. I want your dreams to come true. And with that, in helping your brain to become more efficient, you'll be able to think more broadly and more acutely. It's, it, it's something that when more of your brain, let's say that X amount works, all right, to make it more simple. Let's say that you have 10, 100%, so each of these are 10%. Right now, we are working on about 10 to 20% of brain efficiency across the brain. So every decision you make has this much of a winning opportunity and this much of a losing opportunity or to feel sour or unthoughtful or have forgotten a few things about how you're thinking. This technology helps you improve to about this level, okay? Now you have this many opportunities at all times every breath every breath you take seven winning three losing every move you make motivate every single day every time i pray i'll be motivating we need to crank our motors and the technology is really easy while you watch youtube videos of tony robbins or pastor jensen franklin or or of the president, or while you enjoy Facebook and scrolling on Facebook, or while your kids use their technologies to play video games. So we can, yes, we can increase their brain's ability to be able to have less stress and less brain fog for more joy, for more happiness, and for more focus, and for more overall intelligence. And not only that, but it helps the brain become limitless because those same patterns, think about this. Think about a time we are very reactionary, so we wanna boop, ready right now, which we can hack in and help your brain do so much better quickly. Which you'll see some of those benefits nearly immediately.
But what you'll see is over time, next thing you know, you can do things like rhyme, maybe sing and dance, maybe do videos for presentations and talks about all sorts of things that your mind before couldn't quite count, comprehend. It's what helped me. It's what helped 251 of my clients in a row. And it's called motivation. And, it, and, and it's like this. People like Tony Robbins, they're what, what heroes? I mean, what motivational heroes they are. But one of the things that they're missing is you can only motivate or motivate a bicycle to be the best bicycle it can be. You can't without a new motor or better wheels or better, you know, more functionality. That's all Tony can do. He did his best. Give him a break, Champ Vinci. Oh, I am. But guess what? Somebody's got to break his glass ceiling, and I'm sure he'll be glad that someone does. Because what we can do is instead of having bicycle brains that only two parts of the 20, 10 to 20% of the possible 100% that we've been given is working, so instead of a little two-cycle motorcycle, we can give you a motorcycle with safety that maybe can fly that maybe can create safety devices that when you wreck it, you don't die. That's how much better the braid is about to become. I was able, using the same technology to figure out how to help reduce and, and pull, help people become uh, three-time winning NASCAR race, driving series champions, off-road champions, help people pull them out of Alzheimer's, anxiety, depression, de uh, dementia, uh, just helping people get back from busting their head uh, with a concussion, NFL players pulling them out, and guess what? That isn't even my focus. My focus is really is how do I help them, just like America, how do I help you have a better every single day life and make more money? So there's two ways to the motivate process. One is to improve our minds using technology that's as easy as the old traits of are you happy and you know it, clap your hands. It's that easy. It's just using that with the algorithms similar to the ones you use on Google that say, this is how your brain works. Well, guess what? We reverse strategize that to make your whole brain work to where you're smarter than your technology and it can't guess where you're going because you can have new ideas from different compartments of your brain every single day. Kind of like the self-evidence that President Abraham Lincoln talked about where he freed the slaves and also laid the pathway to where slaves and women, the Emancipation Proclamation, that it laid the pathway for you all to be able to vote. But now we're arguing over the same pot of money. So if we really think about it, yeah, America's grown and we make a lot more money, but we're still arguing over the same pot of money. So how do we create our own pots of money so that we don't have to lean on the government, which we already do? Sorry to say it, we have a freedom, uh, a freed uh, democracy that is on capitalistic ideologies, but we are still individually stuck in a monarchy and a slave system. The Republicans run it like a monarch or more like kind of like slave or like, we got the money and we'll give you a little bit, but you need to just somehow magically find your own. And then the Democrats are like the slaves like, oh, but I'm a, but I'm a this, but I'm a that, come on. Let me be the president. Ah, my great grandpappy didn't have something, or uh, you know, I fought really hard for this over here, and because of my skull, my color, or my gender, I should be the president. So it's like a slave and a slave owner, and those kind of things are exactly what we freed ourselves from. So why is our political system like that? Because that's how your financial system is still in America. But thank goodness to these motivations that have come into my mind and thank goodness for the heart and the spirit that that God has given my belief in God and my love for Jesus has given me because I also want to give you a very simple overview of the Bible today that I think most anybody can pick up on so let's do that real quick also we want to pray real quick to Heavenly Father we thank you for this day thank you for the motivation and the motivation and the innovation that that you bring us that that in the Bible that People used to be blind and had to be healed. Now we have glasses. That people used to have leprosy and all sorts of things, and now we have medicine. And people used to have all these, be lost in the desert without food. Well, now we have farms. Well, Lord, thank you for the tractors. Thank you for the sound of these American uh, workers on the other side of the hill back here. People out here in America getting after it. The majority of people love you, God, here in America. The majority believe in Jesus Christ. The majority believe in helping one another and doing what Jesus said. But God, we just don't have the financial systems um, and the leadership that we need. 
and, and the technology advancements to sink in and to be clear enough to these people that are saying no to ending the majority of the pain and struggles that we pray for. So Lord, I just ask that you do it, that you work in all the people, people's minds that I can't reach. And Lord, just let this message and uh, the Holy Spirit that, that, that God, you gave us this earth and this world. You saw we couldn't handle it. You sent your son, Jesus. He loved us, said, love your brother. He peaced out and you told us, hey, y'all handle this. Love each other and you have dominion over it all. So God, I just pray that you help that message sink in and understand that when our prayers go up now, that, that they're, 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 they're literally, that there may be a spiritual Jesus come down here, but there ain't a the literal Jesus and there ain't a the literal God that comes down here. That you are in all things, that when we utilize our intelligence, when we utilize our spiritual side, and we, when we utilize the answer prayers that you give us through three things like technology, that we can have a much better world. And Lord, I thank you for the financial freedom plans and the earn you keep, the each system. I want to help free the American people, Lord. I thank you for the blessing of being American. I thank you for having uh, for having the soul and the mind of many different colors of skin, but in my own body, Lord. I thank you for allowing me to love my brothers and sisters that are out here. And I just thank you for this message about how to increase who we actually are, Lord, because I talk to them about money and I talk to them about human performance. But one of the things I forget to tell them is you get X amount closer to God. And Lord, may that message come out through our performance, through our love for one another, for our money system, for our country, for our government, but help us to get close to you, Lord. Let this lit type of technology be, be Champ Vinci's ladder to become greater to you. May this math problem I'm about to explain make more sense, Lord. And may they soak it in. And Lord, send me some money. I'm getting low. In Jesus Christ's mighty and powerful name, I thank you. Amen. All right, we're going to have a quick overview of the Bible. And not, because I think you should dive deep at times. But check this out. I want to kind of go over this. Because we could accept it like this. And, and I'll explain it in just a minute. Let me get back here. And what we're looking at is the old school way of talking to people is that we're all damned, we're all damned, you know, you're this, you're, you know, you're blind. And I'm like, no, I, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. All right, here we go. Philippians. First chapter, third verse, it's thankfulness and prayer. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, making request. Oh, before I, I want to go back. I want you to imagine me saying this to you, America, and to the world, because this is how I feel. When I read this a little bit earlier, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly how I feel about this. So that's another way the Bible, the Bible can speak to you internally, or it can kind of explain better words for how you may feel about other people and about certain things. It's beautiful. All right. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you, all with joy. For, for your fellowship in this gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think of this, of you, of you all, because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains, the things that have me chained up, I, I, you're also chained up here. And in the defense, I defend you and defend myself and defend each other and confirmation for it is written for we are Americans. That part isn't written in here. I was just making a comparison. <laughs> confirmation of the gospel you are that you are all partakers with me of grace for God is my witness how greatly I long for you and the affection of Jesus Christ so to love my brother and sisters the way I love my God I love my God a lot so lucky for you that's a good thing and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge motivation and in discernment less hate in knowledge, increase of motivation, and in less hate and discernment. You know, maybe I don't have to be a jerk. You know, maybe there is a different way to invite the Democrats over. You know, maybe I don't hate the Republicans so much. You know, Champ Vinci sure is handsome. Maybe I will stop holding back and give him some money. In this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve all things that are excellent. Let's approve things that are excellent, right? 
that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. All right, so that's the book. I got in it. I read, I read what was it, about 45 seconds to a minute, maybe two minutes right there. I got my touch of the Bible. You can go deeper in that. But you know, two minutes every day is better than no minutes any day. Because in two minutes, I, I, I've been able to connect my heart, my soul, and my mind to a message to my brothers and sisters of love, of abundance, and of increase. So this motivate instead of motivate. Motivate is only the I and whatever you have. So if you have 10% out of 100% ability for your brain to work right, then you're 90% of a loser mentally, just to be straightforward, okay? Most people, even the top performers, are between 10 and 40. Okay, so that's why we're so by a part of the main reason we're so bipolar is because we're under 50% operations. And when we're under 50% operations, everything that functions through the brain, what do you know? It's a big cutoff that when you get over 50%, like me, things begin to become more joyful. Even the pains and sorrows are more joyful. And you can use different parts of your brain to do things that you've never been able to do before. So we can do this easily through technology. And just because you don't understand how my amazing 100% success brain enhancement technology and protocols work, does that really matter? You don't know how your cell phone works either. And you also probably didn't know that they're arguing about our money being stolen by the rest of the world. So this is what we do. I have a system that holds our government more responsible. It's called the earn your keep. And it begins with keeping them on salary, but also on commission. And we'll make say like 10 commandments or 10, not commandments, but 10 rules that in a local area, state, uh, national region that our government officials must hit marks for them to get their commission payouts, which means that you have more money in your own savings, that you have more money in your uh, internal retirement accounts, your IRAs, and that also you have a money that you are collecting naturally of a metacor, so you can take care of your own wellness, which is what Cheddar wants to do, cognitive health empowerment directed intelligence, to where we can have our med medical help on our own side instead of watching insurance companies pay about it. So when you go to work, ding, ding, earn your key, ding, ding. Part of the increase in pay that we'll ask employers to give will be on you showing up and doing your job, just regular base stuff. Basically showing up and doing your job and not getting fired. All right, and you'll get this extra money, okay? But each of this extra money, then every time you go and spend American, and then every time other people spend American from outside the place, ding, 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 because it is only right that if off the backs and the blood of the soldiers of America and off of all the people struggling, the people we've lost to suicide, a Christian every 17 minutes and a U.S. military veteran every 22 minutes, that when we have technologies and a system and then as many people in, uh, in poverty and then as many people that kill themselves coming out of a divorce, when their, when their wife and husband could probably get along if we taught their brains quickly how to stop being so irritated, all right? And then when we get the media, which, which is part of that World War III is the media effect. I saw CNN being mad about, so Mike Pompeo, had, I guess, gotten a, a, a argument or something, or maybe he was rude or something to a reporter. It happens. The reporter, there's plenty of reporters that are rude. It, it happens. So somebody brought it up, and one of his buddies, or one of the other Republicans, when somebody brought it up, maybe it was President Trump and trying to make light of it and telling him kind of proud of him. But the other guy sat behind him and just patted him on the back. So in other words, if this is my friend Jimmy, Jimmy, a big MAGA MAGA fucking fan and a hardworking American right here, and he accidentally said somebody rude over here. And, and, and we're like, man, Jimmy, that was a little strong, man. We want the liberals to vote for us. And, you know, I'm proud of you for standing up against that. But maybe, maybe Jimmy, we had the wrong thing. Then I'm probably going to pat Jimmy on the back, too. But CNN had a whole thing berating the guy for patting somebody on the back, even if he had said something that was rude. CNN, who died made you God of the backpack? 
You know, I know you guys want Biden to win, but wasn't it just six, 12 months ago that y'all were too concerned about Biden's overtouching and the rubbing of the hugs? So when are we going to stop? Like, first of all, not, neither of them are weird. They're both friendly. They're both great Americans, both great people for all we know. But the media is sitting out there saying, stop patting each other on the back. Boo sheep. That's part of that. World War Art. Back to the motivation. All right, so we're going to increase our brains across the system. It, it, there's been studies that show that for one month of, of the training that we offer called CHAMP Feedback, Cognitive Health and Mental Performance, which is focused on the best of you instead of the least of you, which is the old system of mental health. You're an ADD, you're this, you're that. It's a witch hunt, and we're not going to do that anymore. No, now you're a child of God, and you're a Reverend President Dr. Champ Vinci, or whatever you would like to be called, because it's your choice. It's your life. And what we want you to be called is a champion, is a winner, because that's what we are in America. So just because our systems haven't served you, the medical system's greatly failing us, the mental health system's greatly failing us, uh, the financial system's greatly failing the individuals of America, well, that's why you vote for Champ Vinci. Because it's the best ideas that we've had since we've created America. And that we are going to not have another Independence Day from the slavery systems that get kidnapped quickly in the world, in the world. So Nancy Pelosi hand ties, Mitch McConnell's hand tied, Hillary Clinton's hands tied. Uh, uh, we, we, we won't keep going to that. Trump's, all of them. So why is it? Because the world is counting on them and putting their bids in. Why is Russia trying to hack our elections? Why are all these people trying to hack our election? Are they just meanies? Well, they might be meanies. I don't know that. Um, but they want more of our money, more of our hard work enslaved off our backs. The world is at war against our president for our money. So it is smart for us to help take care of the world. And it is smart for us to create world peace by doing that. But what isn't smart is for us not to build up the assets and the savings of Americans along the way and create real capitalism. I'm calling for an end of all social, socialistic slave uh, monarchy systems and calling for a real capitalistic system that when you spend, you win. That when you go to work, you get savings. Now, when you begin work as a middle schooler and as a high schooler, which we're going to push entrepreneurship into the middle schools and into the high schools, it doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, where you're from, or what you look like, because you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to be the captain of your ship. And that's where we break the Tony Robbins glass ceiling of how motivated can you get? Or how many systems can I get your money to hit? Here's how you get people to get their money out of your account and mine. How about we just hold our politicians and our government responsible and, and put a system that holds them responsible for making sure we make more money and that we have systems in place that go eek, 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 and your bank account goes up every time you spend to win. You buy American, you get a little more coin in, in, in your pocket. I know you love it. I love you too. So this is part 68 in the hate. We increase motivate through the minds and through the savings and systematic changes of America that make Am not just America first, but Americans first. Please stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance and to help uh, incorporate and to end racism and sexism and all the other things that are going on. When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we're gonna say, we're gonna take our hands off our hearts at the part and say, one nation, all colors, under God, and then back to your heart. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, all colors, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And how do we make sure that these systems go into place? Well, when we mount up, like, how do we fly like eagles? What do we do? We flock them. What are we eat? A G L E S, Maga Motherfucker, U S A, Maga Motherfucker, U S A, Maga Motherfucker, U S A, and from this side of the bridge, we'll ride our motorcycles back, our motorcycle brains and our motorcycle bank accounts back over to your bicycle side of your old ways. Y'all wanna get on this? You gotta wear a helmet, all right? But you gotta get on. All right, we got one more. 
And there's one thing, if I know there's Amer that American, and then especially with Jesus, that with a mustard seed, we can move a mountain. And, I mean, I don't know what you know. Oh, but if you don't know. Listen, baby. Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough. Marga, motherfuckers. Need me, call me. No matter where you are, no matter how far, glory, baby. Call my name, Chip Vinci. Give me the hurry, Chip Vinci. I have to worry. There ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep Chip Vinci from you, America. Hey, I love you, America, and I got plans to help us all have better mental health, help us all have better attitudes, and help us all have more money. And that way we can love each other and complete the capitalistic vision and dreams of here in America. No mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to take me away from you, America.